A 28-point Game 7 turnaround saw the Timberwolves storm back to advance to the Western Conference Finals. On the 20-year anniversary of the franchise's last Game 7 second round series win and franchise legend Kevin Garnett's birthday, the T-Wolves were seemingly meant to win this one. Shout out to KG. Happy birthday, KG. Here's your president from all it of was us. A birthday. <laughs> it was his birthday. It was yeah, his birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, my boy. Clawing back from both a 20-point Game 6 deficit and a 3-2 series deficit, while Edwards shot 6-for-24 from the field, his defense and leadership were sufficient, allowing Carl Anthony Towns and Jaden McDaniels to carry the team to a win offensively. But defensively, Carl Anthony Towns has now held Nikola Jokic, Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, and Devin Booker to 37% shooting from the field as their primary defender. Jaden McDaniels is the second youngest player in NBA history, only behind Michael Jordan, to have back-to-back -back elimination games with 20-plus points, 3-plus steals, and 3-plus blocks. Rudy Gobert's 21 boards and 4 stalks over the final two games against Denver shut up the haters. Denver players shot below 30% from the field when defended by Anthony Edwards. With that said, we're about to look at how the Minnesota Timberwolves utterly shattered NBA history in more ways than one, and after the franchise's fourth playoff series win, how Minnesota is seeing the light at the end of the tunnel for their basketball team. That, plus the Timberwolves matchup with the Dallas Mavericks in the conference finals, is on its way, so make sure you stay tuned. Right quick, just 9.3% of you watching right now are subscribed, so please subscribe. Splash thumbs up as it makes a massive difference, and follow at DFlowHoops on Instagram and Twitter for a follow back. With both Towns and Gobert in foul trouble, interim head coach Micah Nori went to Sixth Man of the Year Nas Reed down the stretch, who in this sequence is in place of Cat. First, it's Nas bumping Murray off his spot as the low man in drop coverage. Then, Reed holds his ground on a Jokic drop step, stuffs the post hook, and when Jokic recovers it, Nas pokes it away from him. The very next possession, it's Reed bailing the Wolves out by sneaking behind Jokic and Murray, then fending off Nikola for a beastly one-handed tip. That sequence from Nas Reed, combined with Mike Conley blitzing this pick and roll and snatching it from Murray at half court, before netting the hockey assist to Edwards for a corner triple, were a few of the most essential moments for Minnesota in closing out Game 7 on the road. What gave the Wolves a chance at even getting close to those game ceiling moments, however, after initially being bothered by the rocky terrain, was a Wolfpack stalking of their prey to overcome a massive disadvantage in historic fashion. Down 15 after the opening 24 minutes, Minnesota overcame the largest halftime deficit in Game 7 of all time, topping the 1975 and 2018 Golden State Warriors, who both came back from 11 at half. The Timberwolves ultimately made a shocking 54-24 run over the defending champions. Last video, we delved into Anthony Edwards being a superstar, but Carl Anthony Towns took the lack of attention for Minnesota as a whole personally. And uh, this game just shows that the Timberwolves, not Anthony Edwards, not Carl Anthony Towns, not Rudy Gobert, the Timberwolves are a special team. On a separate note, the way Towns and Edwards motivate one another is a big reason for their success as a duo and in turn the Timberwolves as a whole, but more notably, on a night where Edwards shot just 6 for 24 and 2 for 10 from 3 point range, it was Towns and McDaniels combining for 46 points, 18 rebounds, 4 steals, and 3 blocks that carried the load for Minnesota on the massive stage that is a second round series game 7. More on Towns coming up, but Edwards was still exceptional defensively and finished with team highs in both minutes and assists. AE's passing out of doubles and communication were also prevalent factors amidst an off-shooting night. Ant-Man waved to the crowd when it was all said and done, which Jokic was upset with, but Nikola should have won the game if he didn't want Anthony to do that. A splice of Nas Reed's defense on Joker in a big time moment was showcased earlier, but both the defense of Nas and Carl Anthony Towns on the Joker saved the state of Minnesota. Watch Towns initially check Jokic's transition to the post, and after Nas doubles before it swung around to the perimeter and eventually back to Jokic, what could have been a push off isn't called, but even after taking the Joker elbow, Carl stays physical with Nicola and ultimately bothers a post fade with his aggressiveness yet simultaneously fundamental positioning and timing.
Towns has always been an overlooked personality, to say the very least, in terms of his enthusiasm getting underappreciated by fans and media, but it's obviously on-court production and team success that ultimately dictates likability. People like good hoops, those who provide it, are inevitably the most popular. Still, Carl is someone people have hated on far too much. My point is, Regardless of that hate and the shots at his personality, the lockdown interior and all-around defense Carl Anthony Towns played on a three-time MVP and reigning finals MVP in Nikola Jokic should give Cat your respect if you're a sports fan. Not only did Carl have a Game 7 defensive masterclass, but in the most crucial moment of the four-time All-Star and two-time All-NBA player's career, he stepped up for a 23-point double-double on nearly 70% true shooting, including a monster putback that put the game fully out of reach. Give this man Carl his flowers for that. Towns did a ton of losing to start his career for a Minnesota organization that hasn't had success historically in a 35-year history as a franchise. For me, being here nine years, I've seen everything and seen it all and, um... Man, fuck them nine years. Just, <laughs> man, fuck them, right? Like Towns just did, head coach Chris Finch has given his thoughts on the lengthy losing era in Minnesota. You know, honestly, I couldn't tell you because I wasn't here for those first 26 years and I don't care what happened beforehand. Um, but the reality is, like, we got a bunch of guys who love playing together. They play hard. They play the right way. They're young. They let me coach them hard. Um, and it's been fun, you know. And that's been the foundation of being able to grow this little by little. Long way to go for us. Um, but, yeah, we don't really care what happened before because that does, doesn't relate to any of us. So, In the midst of their franchise turnaround, Minnesota has utterly shattered NBA history, not only Game 7 history, but this more prominent record, which goes to show the league is more balanced than ever before. By eliminating the defending champion Denver Nuggets in the West Semis, it's the first time in league history, and fact check me on this, that six different franchises have won the title in the span of six seasons. Even more incredible than that, no reigning champion has even made it out of the second round in the last six seasons. Whatever the cause of it may be, it's as hard as ever in the modern NBA to repeat, let alone win one. For two players, your boy d is labeled as backbones to this Timberwolves team in prior Minnesota videos being Mike Conley and Rudy Gobert. Despite being five inches shorter than Caldwell Pope, plus being on a bad knee at age 36, MC displayed his toughness to somehow inspirationally spring up for this clutch jump ball. Conley showed us there's no excuses in the playoffs, especially when you get this deep into them. Conley was given the utmost praise by Nikola Jokic postgame, who called Mike the most underrated player in the game. For the four-time DPOY, Rudy Gobert, given Gobert isn't known as a shooter by any stretch of the imagination from any range, this ridiculous circus shot over Jokic to beat the buzzer from the baseline was utterly shocking. Rudy's shot clock cheese was also crucial. Perhaps Rudy's biggest accomplishment was proving this talking head wrong. Number one, the big Frenchman is sitting on that podium speaking his native language. We, we, we need to do this. You, you, you need to get a stop. They don't believe anymore. To the hot take machine and Green's surprise, the Wolves' belief was precisely what kept them alive. The Wolves found a way to gather themselves so professionally after losing three straight games for the first time all season that they ended up clamping down and mauling the reigning champions by nearly 50 in the next game. And most recently, even after seeming dead in the water in a multi-sided winner go home, they never stopped believing ultimately allowing them to shatter league history. The stunning development leading to smothering lockdown defense, three-point shooting, and general offense from Jaden McDaniels is something that hasn't been talked about nearly enough. McDaniels attempted a last-second rub-it-in dunk that is being talked about, but what people aren't realizing is this man Jaden deserved to access sociopath mode given how he dominated in consecutive winner-go-homes. I'm here to call Jaden one of the best up-and-coming wing players in basketball because of these timely performances. This man's offense has come a long way to the point where he's a legit threat off the dribble. On the other side, where he makes a living, the lengthy wingspan of McDaniels, mixed with Jaden's persistence and intelligence, 
can lead to some insane backside rotations as we saw in Game 7. Jaden proved his worth given the Wolves lost to the Nuggets without him in the first round last year. Same thing goes for Nas Reed in that respect. In terms of their next opponent, the Wolves have proved to match up fairly well with the Dallas Mavericks over the last few years. The Wolves have a 6-4 record in their last 10 games against the Mavericks. Most recently, the Timberwolves beat the Mavericks by 35 points at the end of January, but Dallas didn't have Kyrie or Luka, plus still had Grant Williams, so Minnesota can't be too overconfident about that recent win. That said, the last time Towns was guarded by Dallas's PJ Washington, which was in January, he dropped a career-high 62 points and 10 threes. Let me know down below in the comments the most special aspect of the 2024 Timberwolves for a chance at next video shoutout. Pause to read today's shoutout winners and leave your take on today's question to compete for either a free jersey or shoe of your choosing. Your boy DFlow signing off, and I'll see you next video.